Hello guys, welcome back to Valhelsia 3. It's your buddy here, Super Turtle. I hope you guys are having a great day because today, guys, we are going to be doing some fun stuff. Uh, I want to go ahead and start off by trying to get sulfur automated. Now, I've got uh, gunpowder automated from the recommendation of you guys. Uh, so as we see here, we have a material stonework factory pumping into an advanced enriching factory. So this makes the gravel, this makes the flint, this crushes the flint into gunpowder, and this is where the gunpowder goes. Now we do need to go ahead and make some hydrogen chloride. So the goal at the end of this video is be able to put this into one of those 3x3x6 areas. So in order to get the hydrogen chloride, we're gonna need to get ourselves some chlorine. Now all we need to do is just pump some brine into an electrolytic separator and we get sodium and chlorine, uh, which is one of the, yeah. Okay, so this is actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna need two of these guys. So let's go ahead and make them. All right, with both electrolytic separators completed, uh, we need to find a spot to put this. Now this is just gonna be extremely temporary because obviously we're, this is basically gonna be our testing facility from now on. Yeah, the super turtle testing facility. Oh, that's not that's not where that goes. Come on, fingers. Okay, so the reason I broke that cobblestone to go ahead and put this here. Now we don't actually need this block. Actually, we don't even really need these blocks here to be seen as well. Okay, so the reason I wanted to do that is because we do we want to do this? Use the top to pump in. And then we just gotta run power up through here. Actually, it's probably just run power up behind. Well, something like that. Okay, so we got our cables here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and actually just run it up through this side here. Not because we really want to, just because that is gonna be the best option for us. Okay. So those are here, so we need to pump water into one of these and brine into the other. Now we make brine with these guys here. As you can see, we got brine in there, so all we need to do is just create one of those. Um, yeah, so I'm actually just gonna go ahead and hijack the brine from that one. So that way we can kind of get the, the ball rolling on this. Um, so, yeah, the brine is behind here. The access port, there it is. And all we need to do is go down. Uh, one more block. Yep, and this is gonna run all the way over to the side. Once we hit water, we know we're there. Yes. Okay, so we just need to run brine up to one of these bad boys. Uh, I'm just going to do this. <gasps> no. No. That, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, okay. That was actually really lame. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we just need a little bit more cable here. I can go ahead and make that. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to make another one of those electrolytic separators for up there. Because I don't know how to get rid of the, the items that are in there. Cool thing is these aren't very expensive. All right, so we got our second guy up and working here. All right, that's for blocks. And so then this has gotta be for fluids. Perfect. Okay, so there we go. That should be filling up with brine, except it's not because we screwed up. Okay, so brine is in here. This is making the sodium and the chlorine. Uh, yeah, maybe didn't think this all the way through. Put that there. So then we need to go ahead and get a sink now. This is all to get the uh, the fission fuel eventually automated. Promise. Well, we'll just have to uh, like set it and forget it. I 
Sinks are one of the most valuable things to me in this mod pack. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so now we got the sink over here. Let's go ahead and get the items pumped in. Boom. We're just going to do something really simple, just like this. Okay, so this should be filled up with water. Yes. Okay, so the two things we need are hydrogen and chlorine. Mm, okay, so the hydrogen is going to come in from the bottom. So we need to export the dark blue gases. Eject on. Okay. And then... Yes, so we're going to go... Nope, that ain't it. We need the gases one. Perfect. Got gases here. All right, and so what we're going to do with the gases is we are going to actually do one of these, and then we're going to switch this over to gases, and we are going to block the port there. So that way it will not connect up. Um, but we need to set this to export chlorine, which is the cyan. Uh like so, eject on. Oh, that's got hydrogen in it. Yep, gotta break that. Boom, okay, so this should have hydrogen. <gasps> okay, so we're actually gonna put the block here. We're going to break this. We need to combine these two guys together in a chemical infuser. I totally forgot that step. I just tried pumping them into there. <gasps> that didn't affect this machine, did it? Nope, it didn't. Okay. Whew. Oh, KB. Actually, we should be good. Yep. Perfection. All right, so now we place these two here. Chlorine is working there. Gases. Input red, maybe. Hey, that worked, okay. And so now all we need to do is go ahead and just get power here. Okay, and then this is making sulfur because we're filling it with hydrogen chloride. Very, very cool. Look at that, sulfur dust. Okay, so look, check it out, guys. Uh, other than this, we can go ahead, we can automate this. It's very easy to automate. Um, just need the thermal evaporation chamber. So we're going to have to find a way to automate that. Uh, but yeah, so we have, so this is literally automated with water and a cobblestone generator. So we get sulfur. And then this is used, let's see. So that would eliminate this guy, I do believe. Yes, because then we can just throw in the sulfur here, where it goes in, and that goes in there. So this is the limit. So this has just been automated. Um, yes, because this is making some. How much? How much brine do we, do we got in here? We got lots of brine. Okay, so let's go ahead and work on some energy upgrades. So we, we've got the system here, perfect. Uh, the next part is condensing it down. <laughs> Woo! Uh, and then we also got to do the, the evaporation thing. So I'll probably find a spot to do that in the new base. And while we're talking about the new base, I want to go ahead and actually show you guys that once we wake up here. Uh, I did make some changes down below. Oh, I also made a change up top too. So yeah, I switched this out for marble brick. I'm really a big fan of this, how the uh, polished marble and the marble bricks like kind of just flow together. I also put these little dark accents in here. I think they look really good. Um, I just think it makes it look a little bit more interesting up there. So I'm really enjoying that. I also decided to use some mana glass. Don't know if I showed you guys this, but this gives off a light um, other than the fact that it does connect to this guy here, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's been sealed off. That's its own little system. And then down here, I did a lot of work. <laughs> so this is uh, what we're kind of going for. Um, went ahead and kind of sealed these in a little bit, got the structure. I don't have all the mana glass in just yet because we're still doing work in here. But yeah, so these are each of the four different areas. Uh, as you can see, each of these kind of, uh, kind of has their own little area in here. Uh, we're going to have the fission fuel and stuff like that coming in here. So it will be looking amazing. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the marble bricks down here eventually. And the cool thing is the mana glass gives off light so we don't really have to worry about lighting in there up because once it's surrounded in the mana glass 
it's going to be uh, it's going to be real lit in there it's going to be a party so yeah um very very cool i'm very wait can i not jump here oh yeah there's glass um but yeah so we're going to work on maybe finding a spot for the brine cuz the brine needs sunlight access um hmm I almost think we're going to need to set up a separate area to generate our brine for us. And we can go ahead and set up like six or seven of those guys, or probably eight. Just like a, actually no, we'll do 16, a four by four of the brine processed, processing. And then we'll use one of the quantum things to go ahead and transmit power and transmit the fluid. So we can just put, go bam, one of those call it good it's probably what we're going to end up doing with this guy up here so i might need to redesign it so that the quantum thing is here in the middle uh, but i'm going to go ahead and start working on getting that four by four area set up for all the brine processing because that's pretty much the only thing limiting us right now which is pretty cool to think about okay guys so i've done quite a bit of progress as you can see we have this little landing platform here and then an archway coming over and then if you look in the mini map you can kind of see what we did boom these are the uh, the evaporation chambers. Uh, as you can tell, we have no solar panels here, but if we come around to the back, you can see the resistive heaters here. Um, these are absolute beasts when it comes to heating this up. If I were to just go ahead and go, let's go 100 Fe per tick. Yeah, these are adjustable, so we when we get more power, we can increase the rate at which they produce power. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna limit these to 60 RF per tick per each of them. So they are a little crazy. If we come down here again, the more power we get, the faster these can become. Uh, we're generating a bucket about every second. Yeah, it filled up this thing stupid fast. This is what we got going on. We're running over there to our main power source coming over here, kind of cuts down, comes around and branches off here. I wanted to make this look really neat down below and I think I went ahead and almost did that. But we do need to go ahead and connect that up. Yeah, so now everything is connected here. Uh, we also, to get the power or the heat from the resistive heater here, we made these ultimate thermo thermodynamic cable uh, conductors which go into a port, uh, which then again turn our water into brine. Uh, now, the very cool thing about this as well is we can go ahead and if we really needed to, um, we go ahead and put a second level up here where we turn the brine into the other thing. I forget what it's called. Uh, we can turn it into the liquid lithium if we needed to. So say we could just take like the back row. If like this is way overkill, we could even make it so this one is producing um, the lithium and then this side is producing the the brine here um but yeah it's uh it's quite crazy or heck we could even break it up so that uh, these two rows will be producing just brine uh and then these two rows will be uh, separated to themselves this one will be producing producing brine this one will be be producing the um the liquid lithium but yeah so we're gonna do some cool stuff on the floor here we're gonna hide some lighting in the ground i'm thinking maybe some carpets or some other way to get some lighting because uh, I don't know if we want to do the, the inset lights anymore. Uh, they're getting quite, quite tedious. Uh, not tedious, but we have a lot of them. So I don't know if we want to keep doing that. It's kind of making this look kind of weird. But I do really like the look of the base from over here. It just It's going to look cool. So this is all going to be sealed off. We're probably going to have a dome room on, uh, roof on top of here. But it's going to kind of come up and then kind of come at an angle here. And then... Uh, go flat and then into a dome. So the dome will be like right around here and I think it'll look really cool. But this is an odd number. Uh, I did space these out five blocks from each other uh, and this is a mob farm down here that we need to go ahead and light up. We're also going to add an elevator down here to go ahead and access this whenever we need to make some changes. So we'll go ahead and probably put that toward the back. Because, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to have it at the beginning. If we need to adjust something, if we, we got to come all the way back here and then shift and then we're down. And then we'll just run back over here. Uh, but as you can see, it's starting to get pretty dark over here. And check it out. It is nighttime, and these things are still running at the same temperature that they're at, which is the major benefit of being over here or for for uh, doing the heater things. But uh, 
yeah so uh i'm gonna wrap up the or this record not wrap up the episode and we're gonna come back tomorrow because it is currently 103 a.m and i'm tired okay guys so it is the actual next day i went ahead and did a lot of work off camera that i want to go ahead and show you guys uh but we actually got we, we did all this before we left and put these lights up to make it real nice uh, but, uh, oh, these seem to be covered. Oh, that would be because we have our sulfur set up in here. Yes, I have two of these uh, These going. Um, yeah, so I, I actually recorded building this one on camera, and then I watched the footage back, and I'm like, I make absolutely no sense in make it when I'm talking about this. So I figured uh, we need to put this to dumping, and there's I guess there's still some kinks I need to go ahead and iron out. Yes, okay. Make sure this one is the same. Dumping. Dumping, okay. So the brine comes over here. We'll go down below. I'll show you here. Brine comes into here. Power comes up through here. We have water over here. Very simple. Brine comes into here. Water comes in here. Gets split up into the two different areas. One gets into hydrogen. One gets into the chlorine. Chlorine comes from the brine. Uh, gets put into here to get the hydrogen chloride, which comes over here and into the back of this guy here. And as you can see, hydrogen chloride is booming. Uh, and then, so the hydrogen chloride gets here. We have the material stonework, stonework factory up top here with the two tier two uh, upgrades here. They come down into the ultimate enriching factory to go ahead and become flint. The flint goes here. Uh, to the ultimate crushing factory to become gunpowder. The gunpowder comes here. Uh, obviously, the limit is the hydrogen only because we're limited on power. When we get more power going, we can crank these to the max, okay? And then we can crank all of the machines in here to the max, and we'll be producing these like a madman, so this won't be as slow. Yes, and so we have them coming out into here, and boom. Now, for some reason, when I explained that on camera, I sounded like a complete idiot. So, yeah, um, it's working real good. We just need to throw some mana glass in front of it, which we can go ahead and do now. All right, so mana glass acquired. All we got to do is do this. And the cool thing about the mana glass, like, we, like I said before, is that this stuff lights up the area, so we don't have to put any extra lighting in here. But now this is sealed. We also do have a spot down below here to access the bin with an external storage. We're gonna have to be making quite a few of those for this area, because each of these will more than likely require that, except the fission fuel areas. So yeah, I think the the best option now, um, like we got the sulfur made. Um, now the only concern I have is the uranium. It's very important when it comes to making the fission fuel. Uh, if we look at the uses here, if we put it in an enriching chamber, we get the, the yellow cake uranium, which is what we need to make the uranium oxide. And then this makes the uranium hexafluoride, that makes the fission fuel, or fissile fuel. Uh, fissile fuel. And I don't, I don't have a way of automating that. If you guys know a way to automate the uranium, other than like just moving a quarry or a mechanism builder, sorry, digital miner around, uh, let me know. Um, but yeah, so off camera, I'm gonna go ahead and fix or finish, kind of finish this room up. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna have walls coming up here. There's gonna be an angle coming in, and the angles are gonna be kind of like this going up. And then at the very top, um, the angles are gonna come in like so, and it's gonna look it's gonna look cool. It's gonna be like, kind of like a square room. I need to turn off vein mining very fast. Oh, that could have been bad. Okay, so yeah, so it's gonna be kind of this square room. It's gonna be very square, but each of the corners is going to be kind of smoothed out, kind of like how uh, think of this is the wall, this is the roof. There's gonna be this here. Uh, so that's going to be all around. I think it's going to give us a really cool look. Again, we're going to come over here, and we're going to have another dome here in the middle. Um, I think it's going to kind of come, like, out to here. It's going to be kind of a big dome. We might have it come, like, halfway out to here. But, yeah, it should look really cool. It's going to definitely be smaller than that one. Uh, so I do want to keep that in mind because I want this to be, like, the main hub that you go between the rooms in. It's also got all of our machines and stuff like that. So I, I don't want... Uh, that to like overshadow this if that makes sense and I am debating on opening this guy up and having like 
some like green blocks there or something like that. Um, I'm not quite sure. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think. Uh, but guys, that is our sulfur system automated. It's pretty neat. Um, you can tell it's neat because of the way it is. But guys, I'm going to be wrapping up the episode here. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. But guys, this has been the Super Turtle. I will see you all next episode. Take care. Peace out. Adios.